Hello everyone and welcome back to IndieCon. My name is Sel or Selkuth Mind and I am super excited to be the host for these next two runs. First which is going to be Death's Door by Upper Casserole. Take it away. Hey everyone, we have a real tweet of a run here for y'all. Uh, this is Death's Door Umbrella only. Uh, I am your runner, Upper Casserole. On comms I have the uh, I have two very talented uh, Death's Door runners. We have uh, the speedrunner who may or may not be a witch, TFT. Hello. Uh, and we, uh, have, and then yeah. we also have uh, Shresh Shenanigans, Umbrella Aficionado, who may or may not actually be in the call right now. I guess not. Uh, they may be joining uh, a little bit later. They're having some tech, diffi tef tech difficulties. Um, before we begin, I have one question to ask chat, which is, why do crows carry umbrellas? Because umbrellas cannot walk. Now that I have established dominance, we may commence the speedrun in three, two, one, crow. So, this is going to be the entire run. <laughs> Just puns. So this is Death Door. If you've never seen this game before, this is an isometric action-adventure game. It's very reminiscent of like a, a 2D Zelda game. You have some movement, some combat, some, some light puzzling, uh, unlocking new abilities to get to new areas, that sort of thing. Uh, we are playing as this adorable protagonist, uh, and we are a reaper of souls. Our job is to reap the souls of those who have lived for too long. We are getting our first assignment here from our uh, handler, Chandler the Handler. Uh, so we're going to go collect our first soul. Um, but before we do that, we have a very special, very important item to pick up. You may notice this crow has a beautiful glowing red sword. It's powerful, it's elegant. But we are not about that life in this run. We're going to come over here and pick up this discarded umbrella. Uh, we're going to equip it. And that is what we're going to be using for the entirety of the run. The umbrella is functionally very similar to the sword, but it deals half as much damage. Uh, so we are handicapping ourselves quite difficult, or quite hard, uh, right off the bat and throughout the entire run. Uh, this is Demonic Forest Spirit. Uh, TFT, you want to talk about... DFS? Yeah, so it's kind of the intro boss. Um, your assignment is to take out this demonic forest spirit, and so what I'll probably be doing is alternating between um, umbrella hits and bow shot to replenish mana at, to get as many one damage hits in as possible. Um, and luckily, if he's fast enough, he can do it before the demonic forest spirit hits the later phases of the fight, which he brilliantly did there. So uh, our umbrella only deals uh, half damage per hit. So a sword hit deals one damage, umbrella deals half damage. Uh, our bow also deals one damage per hit and it's not affected by the umbrella. So uh, we're gonna be relying on spells quite a bit. Um, but you can see my mana bar underneath my health bar in the top left and you re replenish your mana by hitting things with, uh, with melee weapons. So we'll still be seeing plenty of umbrella action. Yeah, a lot of the gameplay is going to revolve around alternating between the Umbrella hits and whatever spell. Uh, currently only bow, but spoiler alert, we will get other spells um, that we use to get a little more damage in. Yep. We have a couple of uh, other attacks we can do with the Umbrella. We have our standard light attack, which deals half a damage. Um, we also have a heavy attack, which deals uh, double damage, so one. Uh, and a, you can also fully charge your heavy, uh, which deals uh, three times damage. Uh, and there's also a roll slash, which I will do to this enemy right here, which is also triple damage. Uh, a little bit tricky to aim, though. Uh, you, you can fling yourself really far forward with the umbrella roll slash. It actually functions quite differently from the, uh, the sword roll slash, uh, like physics-wise. Uh, but it's a very powerful tool, because triple damage is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, currently... Um... Imps will take one heavy or bow shot, and Grunt will take infinite amount of hits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or ab about six. Yeah, uh, Grunts have uh, six or have three HP, so they take a lot of umbrella slashes to, to take care of. And so Upper is going to be making his way over to the first arena in the game. Um, there are many of these scattered throughout the run. Um, there are multiple ways that enemies will spawn in fixed locations. And so Upper will be kind of choreographing his fights a bit, trying his best to optimize movement and attacks, be where enemies are going to be, get bow, bow shots or attacks in as needed, and doing that continuing alternating pattern of hits. 
Um, this is a particularly hard arena as there are about eight waves. Um, we are, I think, in wave seven right now, and this is the last one. Um, and they throw a wide variety of enemies at you to make sure you understand how the combat works as well as possible, I guess. All right. A little bit uh, off script there. Those backpack enemies can be a, a bit tricky. Um, the backpacks that they drop can actually be hit for ammo, which I did a little bit there. Uh, they drop their backpacks on the floor and you can hit them. Uh, this is Deadhone. Deadhone is teaching us about our different attacks, so he invites us to use a heavy attack and a roll slash on him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that he... is the extent of Deadhone that we'll be seeing in this run. Yeah, uh, Deadhone wants you to do a light attack, but luckily we can just skip that with a heavy, so we save a teeny bit of time there too. Yeah, if you want more Steadhone content, you can check out some of the other longer categories, like 100%, where uh, Steadhone has a much more involved role, but in any percent, that's basically all we're going to be seeing of them. So we're just working our way through the uh, the cemetery here. This is the, the sort of central hub area, all the, the other areas of the map connect to here. And uh, yeah, we're working our way up to uh, the summit, where... Uh, you may have noticed when we killed the Demonic Forest Spirit, a large crow uh, stole the soul from us, so we need to go get it back. And uh, I'm not sure how he got through all of these arenas and, and enemies with uh, with no trouble, but we have to have to do all these fighting, apparently. Oh, he's, he's been here a long time. Got a lot of experience in, I suppose. Right, so this is the second arena, um, another one of the more difficult arenas, um, primarily because we have a bunch of these witch enemies. Um, Witches will spawn in a random location around you and throw shots at you. Um, you can deflect them back for some damage. Um, and there's an interesting property in this game where if you get a hit um, and deflect it back, um, it does double the hit's damage. So when you charge that heavy and hit the, the witch with it, he did more damage than if he had done a regular hit. So he's using that primarily in this section take out the backpacks, the grunts, and a few witch enemies. Unfortunately, that, back that backpack should be rolling off, but it yeah. seems to have... Uh, there we go. <laughs> ...on a last leg there. Um, so this is the last wave. Utilizing bow shots and more bell hits, and cleaning this up pretty quickly. Yeah. Another nice property of, of heavy attacks and also roll slashes with the umbrella is that they can sort of, uh, like, stagger enemies. Uh, you can, like, knock enemies out of their attack animation. Which isn't true of sword roll slashes, but it is true of umbrella roll slashes, which is another really nice property that it has. Uh, here's our first actual sort of serious boss. This is the, the Guardian of the Door. Uh, actually a, a very dangerous boss. Uh, it's very easy to get absolutely clobbered by this thing, especially with umbrella. So it has a whole bunch of wide swings, as you'll see. Um, one of the things he's going to try and do here oh, is no. just oh, okay. roll through the um, the laser that's going to come up right here so that it doesn't do any damage since he has iframes during his roll. And other than that, he'll be trying to dodge these heavy swings and just standard attack patterns to clean it up. Yeah. Playing this a little bit safe. Ideally, I would have gotten behind them when they were doing that laser attack, but I kind of messed it up. Uh, and there's like a wind that blows you away. It's a very tight window, so it's, it's very easy to miss. Okay, pretty good job of not taking any damage though, which is nice. Um, healing in this game is actually quite hard to come by. Uh, we, we get heals when we do save and quits, and whenever we walk through doors, which there's not going to be too many. Uh, and the only other way to get healing is to pick up seeds, uh, which are scattered throughout the world, and plant them in a pot. Uh, and then eats the fruit that grows, uh, which is typically pretty slow. Uh, we are going to get a couple of seeds, but uh, I don't have any right now. So we've been carrying this HP from the start of the game through two boss fights and two arenas, uh, and we have a ways yet to, to carry it, actually. Yeah, um, there is a saving quit. I don't know if you'll be taking it here. Um, that you can do, they'll, they'll cost a little bit of time. Um, but other than that, it is a straight 7 to 10 minutes of no healing action mm -hmm. so here's the gray crow um they have stolen our soul stuck it in this giant door i'm not sure what it's called uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll see in a minute uh but yeah this is sort of the the main story of the game we we now need to find a way to get through this door death's door 
Hey, that's the name of the video game. Whoa. <laughs> uh, this is a pretty long cutscene, so it's a pretty good time for any uh, short announcements, if, if there are any. We actually have a donation. Um, we got $20 from Quacksilver saying, Beyond Psych, to hear the dulcet thwack thwack of the umbrella, a symphony of the protagonist design, and root for the intimidable reroute king, Burb Souls Enjoyer, Pun Master, Upper Casserole. Uh, and with that as well, we now have that upgrade to hard difficulty for Trifox incentive fully met. So thank you so much for that donation and keep on donating because we have more incentives open and looking for donations. Yeah, thanks, Quack. Uh, so I picked up a uh, soul orb there. That's uh, currency in this game is, uh, is in the form of soul. Uh, you get soul by beating up enemies and also by picking up soul orbs. Uh, and they allow us to upgrade our weapons and spells, uh, which we're going to be getting quite a few of in this run since uh, without it, we would be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, and for those of you who watch the normal run of this game on without the or without the umbrella and the regular sword, we get an extra soul orb here. So we don't have to do any difficult addition or subtraction math to figure out. We have enough soul. We can just go straight through the game and not worry about it. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, so here we are in the uh, estate of the Urnwitch. So uh, our job now is to go collect three giant souls to hopefully open up Death's Door. Our first one is located here in the estate of the Urnwitch. Uh, so we have a couple of torch puzzles here. Uh, you can actually... Uh, so you're, su I guess, supposed to shoot your bow through the fire. Uh, but what you can actually do is dip your bow in the fire and then turn around and shoot, uh, which allows you to cut some corners. And I'm forgetting a soul orb. Um, I sometimes get my my routes with a sword and umbrella confused. I would normally skip the soul orb with a with sword, but it's we trash. get some extra upgrades for umbrella. You normally get that soul in any percent. Well, some some people do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Upper and I run different versions of routes, so it's a little playful Let's jab there. But we have. Over here, Pothead, who is a fan favorite character. Uh, we normally skip him in any other route, but because Umbrella, it's a little bit harder to do the trick that skips him. We yeah. we get to see more Pothead, Thank multiple you. extra cutscenes with him. One more reason to run this category: get the extra Pothead content. Uh, I'm also doing uh, the left side of a state here first, whereas in an any percent run, you would typically do right side first. Uh, just so I don't have, like, 600 enemies chasing me through this section, which is what would ordinarily happen. And since, uh, we, since we don't skip Pothead, uh, it doesn't lose any time either, whereas it would be quite a bit slower for 80%. Yeah, enemies will follow you literally to the ends of the earth and back as long as you're on the same level. Yeah, so. <laughs> until you climb a ladder, and then they just True. go, wait, where'd you go? Well... They can't see you. They, yeah. they can just see... As far as they possibly Infinitely want. far forward, yeah. Uh, right. So the whole point is we need to get two of these levers here to open up the pathway. Um, so we went to the left side, and now we'll head to the right side to get the other one. Um, we've seen a couple of them before, but we have a di the other type of arena where we have to kill a certain number of enemies in a section before we can move on. And so this right side has a bunch of those here where we have to kill a witch, some archers, things like that. Um, they move randomly, so it's a little bit different every time. It's going to be a lot of upper improvising his attacks and movements here to try to take things out as optimally as possible and uh, doing a fine job of it at that. Um, what we want to do here is try to make sure that we're getting the witches as they're hitting or as they're respawning so that they're not just jumping around everywhere multiple times. Um, as they are wanting to do. done, but yes, yeah. that's the idea. Um, because every time of, of which respawns, it takes about four seconds. So a lot of time lost if you're not able to. But we can luckily skip these enemies and just go straight to the lover right here. I almost thought that mage was going to snipe me. I was a little bit slow. Uh, mage projectiles will actually continue traveling during cutscenes while you are frozen in place. And they can snipe you and, in fact, even kill you. Um, Many a run has been lost to that, for sure. Yeah. Uh, we have another brief little chat with Pothead. We decline their offer of soup. But that's okay, we're on a mission. 
You know, maybe, maybe someday we'll be able to have some soup with. Yeah. Oh, wow, that archer hit that mage. That's cute. And I'm getting hit during this cutscene? No. Okay. Very, very narrowly dodged. Oh, I forgot Archer Soul. I always forget Archer Soul. It's fine. We have 801 soul, so that's fine. Now, we're going to go purchase some upgrades. I happen to have 801 soul. I need 800. Uh, I should have picked up another soul orb before this uh, for safety, but uh, it's fine. We have 800 anyways, so it's all good. Uh, but Do we have here... to go do math to make sure that you have enough later? Or... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to get the extra soul orb after I have it Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, so I upgraded there uh, my strength by one and my magic by one. So every strength upgrade increases your melee damage by 20%. Uh, and every magic upgrade increases your magic damage by 30%. Uh, so we now hit a little bit harder with both our umbrella and with uh, our spells. Yeah. Um, I believe primarily we'll be going for a magic route here as um, the 20% per hit isn't as good of scaling as the amount that we get for spells instead. Yeah, we want a couple of Umbrella upgrades, because it really does help, especially given that, like, roll slashes deal triple damage, right? It really does start to add up, even though, you know, Umbrella damage is cut in half. Um, but yeah, we're going to primarily uh, level up magic. Uh, there I just picked up my first seed, uh, so that is something I can use to heal myself. I missed the arrow shot, I guess so. Or did I not even fire it? I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think it slightly went to the left, unfortunately. I don't think I've ever missed that shot actually it's like very very lenient actually but anyways <laughs> yeah there's there's a little bit of auto aim in the game which is which is nice for those shots yeah um if, if you're close enough it'll it'll just veer the arrow slightly in the correct direction <laughs> and you might see it right here. here it's fine <laughs> there's all these convenient pots to refill your ammo with which is rather nice yeah. uh, we need to get these pots because um we need to hit everyone to unlock each of the doors um, they're in the same location in every section, so luckily we can just route out our movement like that. I uh, missed uh, the, the Salem skip there. I was trying to shoot uh, this spider web from the other room. Instead, we have this backup, which is not much slower, really. Still skipping the majority of this puzzle. And so um, what we're doing here is we're collecting Kroll Souls, and this is the first arena for that. It introduces us to a new enemy called the Lickitungs. Um, affectionately by the community. Lickitungs are very notorious for doing me very many melee hits when you want them to spit instead, as was seen there, um, because you can hit those projectiles back, but luckily it decided to spit not too soon, or not too late for it to yeah. be faster. Yeah, I think TFT mentioned this, but uh, deflecting projectiles deals double the damage of the attack that you deflect with. So I deflected that projectile with a fully charged heavy, which is triple damage, and then we get double damage because we're deflecting an attack. So it's actually six times uh, a regular slash uh, to do that sort of deflect, which is a lot of damage, even when it's cut in half. Yeah. It's the one for Kaveen on an umbrella because they, they took a little bit of pity on you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for having to use a slightly harder weapon on your challenge. We're introduced to another enemy here of the spinning pots, where um, a lot of what Upper will be doing is kiting back um, to avoid these hits. Um, and we're seeing a few of these small ones here, but coming up pretty soon, we'll be seeing a slightly bigger version of these pots. Slightly bigger um, and much, much more terrifying. Yeah, uh, it's another one of those run killers, especially for people learning the category. Or in many casual run, you'll see dozens of attempts on on this big pot, mini boss. Yeah, casually this boss is <laughs> something. Yeah. In this uh, the one run, they're thing... not too, too bad, but with Umbrella, yeah. they're still kind of tricky. Yeah, they. Um, if we roll during their attack, we get iframes. Um, so we're able to roll into it or away from it and just get a bunch of hits in, or arrow shots in this case. Yeah, that was actually really good. I, I would say I usually don't do that well at that fight, but we got it there. But yeah, the, if you roll into their tornado, you get, like, you become immune to their tornado for a couple of seconds. So that's how you can just sort of stand in melee range of them. Uh, and this is Imploft, the worst room in the game. Yeah. Uh, these imps like to get in the way of your shots as you, in, in basically the dark, shoot all of these arrows to light these fires to the end because you need to burn a web at a staircase. Um, 
And with the Umbrella, it still takes two light attacks, so it is a lot of just trying to desperately not get hit by imps. But luckily, Upper was able to avoid not, not getting not hit by any of them. Left, but we didn't take it any was damage, so... So now we got to make our way back through, which is much safer to the next Kroll Soul. Um, we, on our way back, grabbing a Soul Orb and then doing a couple more of the pot puzzles that we seen earlier. Yep. And there we saw Grandma for a brief uh, brief second. That's uh, the boss in this area. We'll be seeing her a bunch of times as we terrorize and destroy everything in her manner. She's slightly upset with us. And she does ask us to stop a few times, but we're speedrunning. We have to break this stuff. Uh, there is no other choice. All right, here I'm going to try and kill all these grunts using these exploding pots, uh, since that's much faster. But it kind of depends on them cooperating. That was not bad. Dude. Um, the grunt behavior is very erratic. Sometimes they'll just walk around for three seconds where they run at you. Other times they'll just sprint directly at you, and you kind of just have to react in the moment. Um, in this arena, um, notably, these grunts spawn, but if you kill them, more grunts will spawn, so what he's trying to do here is get this look tongue before more grunts spawn, if he can. It is really hard to do on the Umbrella. Yeah, with so Umbrella, we'll I, I don't think I've ever done it. Yeah. It's, it's we'll easier to just deal ways. with the grunts and, uh, like, as, as they as they get in your way, just kill them and don't, don't try to be too fancy. I still took a bunch of damage there, which happens. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that arena is one of the rougher ones for sure. All right, we have three of our four crow souls in order to, to open this door, which is our, our goal here. Uh, but fortunately, we have a nice save quit here, so we don't have to deal with having two HP as we work our way towards uh, crow number four. Um, a lot of these are kind of made to be so you can go in whatever order you want. Other routes and other categories will do different orders of these. Um, so a lot of, you'll see a lot of the same mechanics, just in different variations. Um, so we're doing more pot puzzles. We're uh, doing more fire puzzles. Just a lot of an interesting, and especially on a casual playthrough, unique um, ways of doing all these different areas. Uh, here I'm going to roll slash one of these enemies just for mana. Uh, roll slashing is like the same speed as just rolling, since the roll slash flings you very far forward. So I could be doing my movement just like this everywhere. Um, but I use that to get some mana back uh, by roll slashing past an enemy. Uh, here we skip this whole puzzle by just like rolling over the geometry of that corner so we can just light the, the torch and be on our merry way. It rolls a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. As is rolling a, a little precariously on these yeah. high of the areas. But Upper is a pro and makes it look easy. Um, so this will look very familiar because this is the same arena as last time, except instead of grunts, we have witches. And it works the same way. Um, if you kill the witches, then you will have to kill on the next wave if you don't kill the Lickton fast enough. So in this case, Upper will be focusing down the Lickton first and then taking out the witches as he can. And sorry, I've been corrected by chat. Um, Upper is, in, in fact, a crow gamer, not a pro gamer. Oh, true. Very talented, as yes. they say. All right, and, and soon, that is our fourth crow. Yeah, soon you'll be on fire. Right. <laughs> but now we've gotten every single one of the, the souls we need to open this door. And behind every door is a prize, it's as true. we all know. That's yeah. how this works. And so we'll, we'll get to see what our fancy prize is. Chat with Pothead here for a second first, and then go get our reward. Yeah, unfortunately that's story and that's not important right now. <laughs> What's important is our treasure. Yeah, put in chat what you think it is. I'm hoping it's a car. Also, it level uh, really fast. just to point out, pay attention to what the crow is doing in this cutscene. Uh, just curiously looking at the chest, what could it be? Oh. Oh no. 
We've been bamboozled. We have been bamboozled. So uh, actually what it is, is Avarice. Um, these are kind of end of level sections that are meant to be challenging arenas. Um, kind of to earn the prize at the end of of the tunnel. Um, and so we'll see a bunch of the enemies that we've been previously dealing with. Um, you have to do every single wave before you can get, get to the end, and uh, they're intended to be very difficult. One of the things that you'll see Upper do here is roll through these pots as he has the iframes for it. I mean, other than that, it's just kind of taking these out as fast as possible. Um, okay. I <laughs> Thought that mage had less health than they did, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, especially when they're jumping around like that, it's it's hard to keep track of the exact number of hits you've gotten on any witch. Yeah. So. Um, one important thing on this last wave, as there are going to be about seven to nine enemies on screen, is Upper will be doing a bunch of kiting of the enemies to get his hits in while avoiding getting hit by the little tongue attacks and all of these pots. Um, and hoping that that Ligatung does more deflects like this, so then you can deflect the attacks back as he's getting these hits in. Yeah. It was a little bit of a trick there, that happens. Yeah. Not the end of the world. Uh, I was nervous about that, because uh, you really want to end this encounter with some mana. <laughs> I have two, which is enough. Uh, but I was a little bit nervous about fi firing that final bow shot. Luckily, the Ligaton gave you another spit, so you yeah. could hit it back. Uh, so this is our re our real reward now. Now we get the treasure, uh, which is our next spell. Uh, this is going to be the fireball spell. So it's similar to our bow. We can shoot it in a straight line. Uh, it is a little bit slower to fire than the bow. Uh, and it also deals the same amount of damage. It also just deals one damage per hit. Uh, the advantage that it has is, well, A, it can light torches, um, and B, um, it passes through multiple enemies. So the bow will stop when it hits its first enemy, but the, the fireball can hit a couple of enemies in a line. So it sees a little bit of use. We're, we're mostly going to still be using the bow for, for actual damage, but uh, it has its place. For sure. Um, you'll see upper throughout the course of this run, swapping between bow and fire and any future spells as as they're useful um we utilize every single spell in this category as much as we can um so normally the game wants you to continue on to the second part of the witch's area um but we're not going to do that because we want to get more spells so we're instead going to the next area which is mushroom dungeon yeah, the, the game's dungeons are laid out a lot like a, a traditional sort of Zelda dungeon. You do the first half of the dungeon, and then you get the power-up, and then that power-up lets you beat the second half of the dungeon. Also, claps for leg day. This is leg day. They're the best. We give them claps, and we have an open umbrella while doing so, which is adorable. Um, so we've unlocked the spell for, this, for the first dungeon. That is the manor. And so we're supposed to go and now beat the second half of the manor, but instead we're just going to the next area. Because, yeah, we want to get uh, all of our spells as fast as possible. So we're actually going to end up fighting all of the bosses in this game in reverse intended order. Um, uh, yeah, fighting the, the third boss first and so on. Because we just uh, it, it just happens to be fastest for a number of reasons, actually. Yeah, um, one of the things that... The last area actually has the lowest amount of health of all the bosses. So, yeah, I, weirdly enough. Get, getting all the upgrades for that is extremely helpful. Um, but that's that's later. Right now we've got Ruins, um, which is a actually surprisingly hard part of this run. It's a lot of technical movement and a lot of grunts you have to avoid. Um, so as, as previously stated, the grunts are extremely volatile. And erratic, so it's a lot of reacting to how they want to behave on a particular section. Um, here we need to kill three of these grunts for a key, so we can move on. Um, there are a couple other sections that'll be similar here. All right, gather around, children. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes using the pot, uh, the pot, um, the bomb flowers, bomb flowers. 
sorry, I was thinking about the earlier part of the run. Um, the bomb flowers is much faster as they have a flat amount of damage. Yeah, like we got a little unlucky there. Usually the bomb flower hits like some of those grunts, and it actually hit zero of them, so I just went back and, and used it again. Uh, here we're just going to slide right around this wall. Yeah. You, no need to explode the wall. Uh, it's, you don't even have to do anything fancy there. You can literally just walk right around it. Yep. Uh, and then in some more funky geometry, we're going to do a, a skip here called Mom Skip, since we skip uh, talking to the mother of the forest, a.k.a. Mom. I haven't been getting this lately, which is weird. It's not that tricky a skip. There we are. Yeah, it's a little bit of is isometric shenanigans. They don't want you to do that, so it's a little tough. Yeah, we're just working our way through uh, this area, which is actually very confusing, especially casually. Uh, this area is very big, and a lot it looks samey everywhere. It's very easy to get lost. But I have done this once or twice before, so I think we'll manage. It, it is definitely designed to be a little confusing. <laughs> um, we're going to be introduced here to a new enemy, which is these fire plants. Um, they mostly just kind of spit fire at you repeatedly, but, which is extremely useful for, for deflecting back at them <laughs> and deflecting towards other enemies sometimes. Um, so this is another just kind of introduction arena for those types of enemies, and we get the, more more of these grunts. Yeah, I can um, I sort of manipulate them to line up there. I got one fireball shot off on all three of those grunts, which is quite nice. Uh, but other than that, your standard just heavy light light pattern with umbrella. Yeah, um, the one thing I will say is these are an upgraded version of grunts. Um, they have a little more health than the ones in the uh, manor section, but because we have our upgrades, they still take about the same amount of hits to, to take out. Um, yeah. And that, that'll be true for the next section as well. We'll have an, another upgraded version of the grunts and we'll have more damage to compensate. They do, however, get more and more aggressive, which is <laughs> problematic. But that's okay. Uh, anyways, this is everyone's favorite arena in the game, a bomb flower arena where we just outsource our DPS uh, to these bomb flowers. We know exactly where all these enemies are going to spawn, so we can just do this every time. It's exactly the same with the sword, and it's it is 100%. super good. A lot of people's favorite dungeon in the game, just yeah. because of both both how beautiful it looks if it's done well, and just the sheer fun of just hitting a bunch of enemies with bomb plants. All right, here we're picking up the uh, the forest horn. We never talked to the the mother of the forest, but she wants us to get the uh, the horn for her uh, to open our way to the next dungeon. Uh, and here I'm just gonna go out of my way a little bit to pick up a couple more soul orbs. Yeah, um, I believe after this we'll be going for a another fancy isometric roll, Oof. which he got first try and is incredibly hard. Yeah, that one's a, that I, I call it dad skip because it's functionally very similar to mom skip. It's a lot harder though. The whatever, the geometry of it is just a lot more awkward. Uh, but yeah, got it first try, which is pretty sweet. And now we can go back to the mother of the forest. Oh, well, I rolled onto that wall, which is what I was trying to do, and then I <laughs> face planted into a, a forest spirit. That's okay. Get your saxophones in chat as we take a, a short little break here. Another good time for any announcements, if there are any. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Indiethon Spring 2023 is raising money for Little Warriors. They're a Canadian charitable organization based in Alberta, Canada, who are focused on the awareness, prevention, and treatment of child sexual abuse. Little Warriors volunteers work across Canada to educate adults to help prevent child sexual abuse by delivering the Prevent It workshop. The Little Warriors Prevent It workshop is an interactive workshop designed to educate adults to help prevent and respond to child sexual abuse through improving attitudes about, knowledge of, and behavior towards survivors. This free workshop is unique in Canada and was developed using research-informed methods and evaluated with scientific rigor. Participants can take the three-hour in-person workshop in communities where there are active facilitators, or they can take the 90-minute online version by registering on the Little Warriors website. Visit the website at www.littlewarriors.ca to learn more about their efforts and find out how you can help support their cause. All right, thank you. Um, so we just got our second set of upgrades there. We uh, again did one strength, one magic upgrade. 
the strength upgrade is very important. Uh, now our roll slash, or now our umbrella deals 0.7 per hit, uh, which means that a roll slash deals 2.1. Uh, and that's important because uh, there are a bunch of enemies in this area, in this dungeon, that have uh, 2 HP. And the ability to one-shot them with a roll slash is absolutely critical. There is not much room for error in this dungeon, I have to say. And we're going to see them here. These are the spiders. They have basically a 50% chance to just dodge any attack that you throw at them. So being able to kill them in one hit is very helpful. Yeah, they, they uh, definitely like to dodge. Although I think they were encouraged in the ca this case by the puns to dodge a little more. <laughs> Um, the other enemy we have here are what we call cowards, as they if you run towards them, they will duck under the ground. Um, they take either two bow shots or a roll slash. Um, and we'll see, I think, a couple more? Or is that it? That might be all of them, yeah. I think that's it. There there are some in other sections, but for yeah. the run, that's the in only this, one. In this see. category, I think that's all of them. But yeah, the 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 unfortunately the uh, the Jachi spiders will be seeing a lot of <laughs> in this dungeon and even after it too. But at the very least, we can kill them in one hit, so that's helpful. Uh, we skipped this puzzle a little bit. Uh, you have just enough time to light both those torches uh, without having to break the wall. Uh, we head into our next arena here. Yeah, uh, we're introduced to one of the most hit enemies in the game. Um, Hammer Bros. They are extremely hard in a casual playthrough as they swing their sword very quickly and they have a shield that is hard to take out. Um, but what we'll be doing here is using the fire um, kind of hits to hit both the shield and the, um, the, the Hammer Bro himself to take them out. Okay, not too, too bad. I do get a nice uh, pot here, which I can plant a seed in to, for a heal. So unlike uh, in Manor, it just happens to work out that basically after every arena, you save quit. Uh, whereas in this dungeon, we don't have any save quits. We're just going from, from crow soul to crow soul. So our health is a little bit more precarious here. But fortunately, there's that pot there, which is really conveniently located. Yeah. There are a couple other pots along the way too, but that one is definitely the easiest to get to for a heal. Uh, more funky geometry, we can just roll over that wall. Saves a tiny little bit of time getting to this third arena. Yeah. So now we have some more hammer bros and some fire plants. So one thing that uh, you'll see Upper doing here is using the fire plants to get ammo to fight the hammer bros. Um, so that he has plenty of range to not worry about their pesky melee swings as much as possible. And other than that, that, it's just a few spiders that like to continue to dodge attacks and... Yeah, they, some, they some tend to plants. do that, but that's okay. Yeah. Ugh. Also, you sort you... of see the, the the trickiness of using roll slashes. It's yeah. actually quite difficult to control. <laughs> just like how far you lunge when you uh, are trying to hit the spiders. Blessing and a curse. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, I, and I guess sort of demonstrated, you can change directions. Um, like, you don't have to roll and roll slash in the same direction. You can change direction when you start to slash, uh, which is, again, unlike the sword, where you sort of are locked in as soon as you start your roll. All right, we're just going to pick up this key here and move to our last arena, which is probably the coolest, especially uh, with Umbrella. Um, we get to demonstrate a really cool strat, uh, just, I suppose, discovered by myself, uh, called the Pool Party Strats. Um, and if you have not seen the ending of Terminator 2, uh, spoiler warning. So, by moving in a specific way, we can just lure that hammer bro to go for a swim. Uh, which is really, really handy, because they have a lot of HP. Uh, and that is not the only hammer bro that's going to happen to uh, there are this arena is very very long and we'll be seeing a couple of them actually yeah. so if, if you miss it the first time uh, now's the time to look back at the screen so you can see it 
again. Uh, there's also, there is an invisible wall around this entire pool to prevent these guys from falling into the water, and there's just one tiny gap in that pool, which is, like, literally right here. So, take three. There we go. It's a really, really fun strat to do. The downside to this strat is that um, you typically get eight soul by killing a hammer bro, and you don't get any soul if you if they fall in the water. Uh, and that's really unfortunate because that 24 soul is actually very, very relevant. Uh, and it's why uh, pool party strats are typically not done in any percent. Uh, with Umbrella, it's a little bit more worth. Uh, but we do have to make up the soul by picking up an extra soul orb. It's a fine trade-off to see the um, Hammer Bros wander to their deaths. It is, it for is sure. Alright, we have collected the four souls in Mushroom Dungeon, and you know what that means. It's time to go get some treasure again. Maybe this time will actually be treasure. Maybe. You, you don't think they would do the same thing twice, right? Hey, like, that know. was a little rude. You know, I, I, you know, I, I have faith. I have faith. I think oh. this time we're just going to get the spell. If we, we again, watch, watch the crow. The crow is, is starting to get wise to this uh, routine there. What are they going to do? Cower in fear a little bit. So yeah, now, now we unfortunately have... Well, fortunately because they're fun, but unfortunately for crow, we have our second avarice, um, which, again, is just another four wave set of enemies that we have to take out. Um, there are some enemies here that you haven't seen yet in this run, as uh, I expected you to see them before this point. Um, we call these Moxer Grimers. Um, community has not fully decided. Uh, but you have those, and then this elite archer hook shot, or elite archer hook, elite archer, hooking them's layer. Um, elite archer, where they, unlike regular archers, are not stunned by attacks, so they are much harder to take out than other archers in the game. So this uh, bazooka enemy uh, can hit enemies, so I'm gonna leave him alive for a little bit while I try and deal with these spiders in the hopes that he solves this problem for me. Uh, which he kind of did. He, he got one or two. And this last wave is just a pile of witches. Um, and this new kind of poison witch that does multiple projectiles. And so, um, with the umbrella, it's a little harder to take them out as you you have to track which ones have how much HP. But I did a great job of. Not bad. Yeah, that, that, that final wave is really satisfying with Sword, because your deflects just one-shot all of the mages. Uh, so you just pick them all off instantly, whereas uh, with Umbrella they live a little bit longer, unfortunately. But that's alright. Alright, and we get our next spell here. Uh, like any sort of Zelda-like game, uh, the signature... Well, usually not a spell, I suppose, but these are bombs. Um, which is a really, really powerful uh, spell in this game. So unlike the fireball and bow, which both deal one damage per hit, the bow, uh, the uh, bombs actually deal three damage per hit. Uh, so it's a significant damage upgrade, uh, and they also deal AOE damage, so you can hit multiple enemies at once. Uh, the downside is they take forever to charge. Uh, they, you can also hit yourself with them, uh, and they consume two uh, mana per cast, unlike bow and fire, which are each one. A lot of what you'll see Upper doing in these arenas is he'll be charging the, the bomb up as the enemies are spawning, so he can get those in as soon as as soon as they spawn to kind of mitigate the charge up time. Yep. So as we're leaving here, we're just picking up a couple of soul orbs. Uh, as I miss one very early in the run, I'm going to grab this soul orb here, which isn't too far out of the way. It isn't that much slower either. It's yeah, about it's the really same not. amount of time. Yeah. So, not too bad. But you see, I have 873 soul right now, which is, like, around 24 soul short of 900, which is, like, that's pool party for you. Uh, I wouldn't have needed 100 extra soul if I just had 24 extra from before. But, so it goes. Uh, we're, again, upgrading our magic. Um, so, our build is really starting to come together. Now that we have bombs and level 3 magic, uh, our spells are starting to hit extremely hard. Uh, bombs will now, like, one-shot mages. Bombs will two-shot hammer brothers through their shields. 
Uh, it becomes uh, a pretty potent weapon to use in a lot of in a lot of arenas. If, if you want to use more spells in your runs, Umbrella any percent is the run for you. Yeah. Um, I think uh, we're just going to be heading to the next section, so if there's any donations or anything you wanted to get in. Yes, we in fact have a very special donation here from Shress Sanigans, who was supposed to be joining us on comms, but unfortunately, <laughs> tech difficulties. Um, $20, and they say, glad to see Umbrella get the love. Remember to keep your feathers dry. Uh, and they put that towards the rig colors incentive uh, for the very next run. So if you want to get a say in what colors that rig is going to get painted in Stonefly, go over to the donation link and check out the incentives. Thanks, Fresh. Sorry you couldn't be here. Wait, are we are we skipping? Did we get the incentive? No, that it, it wasn't uh, accepted. I, I did just, uh, oh. ask for an incentive for uh, visiting Jefferson, but uh, didn't get any, which is fine. I apologize. Next time. Uh, there, yeah, we just passed uh, the Stranded Sailor, which is the home of uh, Jefferson, a, a really completely ordinary human. Uh, nothing is suspicious about them at all, yeah. but yeah. they're not, vis uh, not visited at any percent, unfortunately. Yeah. It's just another incentive for people to play the game, I suppose. <laughs> and so we've made our way to the third dungeon in the game. Um, this is Castle Lockstone. Um, in the game, it is an in incredibly important lore place. Uh, for us, it's just another arena we have to get through. <laughs> um, it's kind of similarly structured to the other ones as um, we have four souls that we need to get to open another door, which will, I'm sure, be just treasure the next time. I I'm sure it did. Not only is there a lot of lore in this dungeon, there's also lots of puns. Think about it. I mean, with a name like Castle Lockstone, or we're unlocking a bunch of locks, I... Hmm, I don't know. Uh, so we've got our first arena here, where um, we're introduced to a new enemy that we affectionately call Halberts. Um, they do kind of syncopated attacks, so um, a lot of what Upper will be doing is timing his rolls to avoid those attacks. Um, and other than that, it's a bunch of the enemies we've already seen, Hammer Bros, which is Imps. Um, all the fun enemies. Also, you see in this arena and in a couple of the others, there are these ice crystals in the corners. Um, and you can hit those for mana, which I, I did in this arena to, instead of hitting the enemies, there can sometimes be a lot more convenient to, to get back mana by hitting those ice crystals. But yeah, that was a very nicely done arena. Again, just mostly spamming bombs. You see just how destructive they are. They make short work of these very tanky enemies. Do you, would you say that the bombs made a splash? You could say that, yeah. You're gonna challenge me to bird puns? Well, two can play at that game. Well, you know what they say about birds of the feather. <laughs> All right, uh, so <laughs> we're gonna go light this torch here. Uh, this is but for much later in the run. Uh, we get back to that ladder. You can actually climb ladders during cutscenes, so it's very helpful to. Uh, get back there really quickly. Saves a tiny bit of time. Uh, yeah, we're um, working our way towards arena number two. Um, this arena is one of the hardest, again, in the casual playthrough, as uh, we have another elite archer and an enemy we're only going to see once in the entire run, a elite hammer bro, which is golden. See that in a second. Um, right now we're just using bombs to take out as many enemies as possible. Um, one thing that Upper does is intentionally bait enemies so that I can hit as many as he can here. And now we've got our fun wave of the Elite Archer and the Elite Hammer Bro, which Upper is going to make quick work of with some bombs and some Umbrella hits. But yeah, I successfully was... didn't cast a curse. Yeah. <laughs> that arena is really neat, the strats there, where um, I stand in a particular spot so that the enemies that spawn will group up. I managed to get one grunt and one mage with a single bomb, and then the hammer bro and the other grunt with another single bomb. Um, which is very, very helpful, because those grunts... The grunts not only get tankier, but they also get a lot more aggressive. Uh, and these these final, like, final fully evolved grunts are actually terrifying. Uh, they close on you really, really fast, and they make it really hard to get bombs off without blowing yourself up. So we're now making our way over to 
the third bird soul. Um, a lot of what you'll see here is these switch puzzles. Um, and what we are doing here is diagram strats as they were created by one museus using MS Paint, MS Paint diagrams. Yep. So yeah, these many of these strats for where to shoot arrows and when uh, were devised by a bunch of sketchy scribbles on top of screenshots, or in some case, not not even on top of screenshots. Literally, just a bunch of MS Paint scribbles. Yeah. Um. So it helps us get through those much faster into our this next arena where more halberds, more archers. Uh, it's a lot of increasing difficulty enemies. This is kind of the path the game intends you to go. Um. Although, again, you can kind of go in whatever order you want. Um, and so now we're going to see many more halberds. We're going to see uh, more witches um, and just a little bit of a bump in difficulty. But a lot of kiting and a lot of magic spells later, we will quickly get through this. <laughs> yeah, you can see just how many arrows halberds take. It's there. They have a lot of HP. I'm not actually sure what it is. Probably, like, I guess it's at least... Like seventeen health. Yeah, it's like it's like fifteen to twenty. I don't. Yeah. I don't even remember. It's got to be. So, I mean, they take. They can live through three bombs. So it's yeah. It's at least like sixteen or seventeen, which is, is quite a lot. Fortunately, they often appear with lesser enemies that you can repeatedly hit for mana, uh, without having oh. to get in too close. Then we have just passed the easiest puzzle in the game, where there are lasers and you can just walk around them. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to save quit here. So it's about, like, one second faster to actually just walk to the next arena. But by saving and quitting, we get a full heal, so... We'll play it safe. Yeah, um, we have one more bird soul to get here, and this arena is definitely one of the harder ones in the section, as um, you have these rollers back here. Um, I think this is the only arena where uh, bombs are used with the with sword in in like normal any percent. Yep. Um, kind of much like you saw Purdue there, it, the strategy is to charge the bomb as they're spawning in, so that you don't have them turn around on you. Um, so we have one more wave of grunts here, which you'll take out with heavies as heavies on the grunts, and then we have another um, halberd and another poison witch. I guess that's yeah. fine. Hey, I meant to around. dodge that poison slash, but I guess uh, I managed to kill the, the the poison mage. Managed to self destruct, so I guess we'll take it. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, um, both the witch and the enemies can be hit by those poison attacks. So, um, in some other categories, we will bait them intentionally to hit each other, much like with the um, the mortar earlier. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, chat points out that we actually use bombs in a, in a few arenas in uh, in Lockstone with with sword, but <laughs> significantly more with umbrella for sure. So we head towards uh, our third treasure chest. I'm sure this one won't be booby trapped. Yeah, I I mean they wouldn't do it three times. Like, you gotta subvert expectations at some point, right? Right. Right. Chad has been asking for Silk Song. I, you know, yeah. I'm feeling it. Silk Song. Yeah, this fine. this one has Silk Song in it, I'm sure. And if we watch what the crows doing, getting some stretches in, they know what's up. Ooh. Yeah. And then a so, majestic swan dive into the chest too. We've got Avarice number three. The last Avarice will be doing in this run. Um, it is formatted the same as the other ones. Um though it is significantly harder as um, oh, we have a few um, <laughs> more fire, HP enemies and the, these grunts. Uh, the fire mage there dodged my uh, my roll slash, so that's scary. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Not to um, script, though, but we're fine. Yeah. So another new enemy here is the hammer bro, or hammer bro, the boomerang, um, where they like to throw these boomerangs and jump around um, kind of in random patterns. So I will be interacting, kind of reacting to what they do. Canonically named Boomers is their actual name. 
Uh, also, fun fact, we've talked a lot about uh, doing deflecting attacks. Bombs can deflect projectiles. Uh, unfortunately, RNG oh, oh, did cooperate. That cro that uh, Halberd yeah. died to that a, was a one deflected a deflected projectile, which deals double bomb damage. Uh, it's a bit RNG depending on where the the Halberd the green pots feel like standing, but it yeah. works very nicely. And for the only time in the run, we'll see what are called smos in the community. Um, you can just kind of kite around their side and. Uh, not get hit by any of their attacks. It's very nice. All right, so, our, our final spell upgrade, and this is why we've been skipping all the boss fights. We really wanted to just get this spell. This is the Hookshot, which uh, just massively gives us uh, a huge speed boost uh, for, throughout all the all the areas of the map. Yeah, and so you'll see Upper making his way back over to Lockstone, ma making his way back. Wait, upper, are what? you okay? Controller, hello? Yeah. Did my battery die? Uh, well, death. We get to see the, the iconic death screen. Uh, that was that was an intentional death warp. Uh, yeah. We're just warping back to Castle Lockstone. It wouldn't be a speed run without an intentional death warp, would it? Right. Um, but yeah, typically uh, saving and quitting and death warping will do the same thing. They both typically send you back to the last door that you walk through. But the one exception is after an Avarice, where save, save quitting will just take you back to the Avarice chest. Uh, but Death Warping will still take you back to the last door that you walk through. So it's the one and only intentional Death Warp that we do uh, to save a tiny bit of time. Uh, and so you'll see very quickly we're making a ton of work with this hook shot. Um, you can hook to a ton of different things in the game. Switches, um, the little anchors on the ground, enemies. So uh, you'll see... For the rest of the run, upper hook shotting as much as he vertically can. And here, I lit that torch on save quit. So uh, that triggers this cutscene where we, we're supposed to watch this torch lighting up, but the torch is already lit, so we just sort of stare at nothing for a good <laughs> 10 seconds or whatever. Um, and so we saw before that he was lighting a fire. He will the second one here, and he has two more he has to do to unlock the elevator that'll take us to the next section. And so uh, we're just going to be doing a couple of hook shots to get over to that area. Um, coming up, there will be a couple of fast rats that we'll be using. Um, first here, where um, you can shoot a bow and then hook immediately to get the elevator right up rather than have to take the stairs. And then here, we'll be, rather than doing this puzzle, just hooking over to here, rolling on to this lion head. We'll try again. There we are. And then just skipping the gate entirely. Uh, and then we have one more puzzle, which we can use another fast strat to get these switches as fast as possible. Walls are optional in this room for some yes. reason. Um, a thing you'll find in this game is that walls are fake. Also, I, like, 360 no-scoped that torch way off screen. Uh, here, we, not... here we can actually see the cutscene of the, yeah. you know, the torch lighting and the elevator moving. I have not seen that setup before. Is that a new one? Uh, it's, I've been doing it a little while, but yeah, I use the, my mouse for more precise uh, shot there. Yeah. Um, for a lot of runners, um, sometimes that, that fire doesn't like to cooperate, so you can lose a, a couple dozens of seconds uh, having to get some more ammo and fight that correctly <laughs> depending on how bad it goes but upper again is a pro is a right, pro where pro. should where should we go next i think the game might be trying to tell us something hmm i think we should go back to the other sections uh you forgot to do the other bosses so hmm. <laughs> yeah that cutscene is supposed to be the elevator like rising out of the ground the torch lighting etc but again because of the save quit we just stare at this elevator for, you know, 20 years or however long it is. All right. So we're finally doing the second half of a dungeon. Uh, we're going up to uh, the watchtowers. Uh, we'll see. Uh, that is uh, Arm Day, named such for their, like, 40-foot vertical leap that they can sometimes do. Uh, when they jump at us like that, when we're on the ladder, we say the run is blessed, so we uh, have good fortune. I found out. Um, 
that his twin is actually over here too. This sure. one will also, if it's close enough. Yeah, sometimes they, they will jump at you too. Yeah, so. Uh, facts that may, some other runners may not even know. <laughs> um, we're just gonna be um, doing story stuff. It's not really relevant. So if there's any other donations, um, while Upper's making his way to the next section, um, that would be a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that we are raising money for Little Warriors. They are a cha Canadian charitable organization based in Alberta, Canada. We're focused on the awareness, prevention, and treatment of child sexual abuse. The Little Warriors Bee Brave Ranch is located on 120 acres of land outside of Edmonton, Alberta. It is a specialized, intensive, trauma-informed, evidence-based treatment center focused on helping children who have been sexually abused, as well as their families. The program is for girls and boys from ages 8 to 12 years old and for girls between the ages of 13 and 16. They offer a one-year combined on-site and outpatient program designed with significant input from many leading academic and clinical experts who specialize in child sexual abuse and trauma. Visit their website at www.littlewarriors.ca to learn more about their efforts and find out how you can help support their cause. All right, so we're into watchtowers here. Uh, one of the scariest, I mean, this is basically the final area of the game, uh, and a very scary one at that. Uh, we yeah. have just a couple of brutal uh, sections of combat. Uh, again, with a lot of these grunts that are just incredibly aggressive. Yeah. Uh, and we'll we'll see a couple new mechanics here as well. Um, this is a ice level, um, so we'll be seeing some ice coming up pretty soon. Um, and in an attempt to throw literally everything they can at you, they also throw some lasers in, um, which we'll see in the next arena. I took that halberd a little bit slow. I wanted to make sure I had mana leaving the arena. Mana management in this section is kind of precise. Yeah. And a lot of what you'll see Upper doing here, especially now that he's scaled the magic a lot more, is he's going to be utilizing his bow and bombs as much as, as possible. And since they take two bomb shots, he had just enough ammo to run over, hit that, and then just make his way to this ladder up here. Waiting for that boomer to land so that uh, the two boomers will be in sync with each other here. So I can hit them both at once. It looks like a coordinated dance like this. <laughs> yeah. Just... Leaping yeah, together and for sure. Alright, and here we have a, a bit of a gate skip. So there's this gate here, and if we climb up on this wall oh, and do a precise hook shot, we can just get this hook and skip a, a good section of the run. It's probably like a minute or more of a. Uh, there's another of laser showers. arena, there's a whole bunch of platforming, yeah. but nothing I have to worry about in this run. <laughs> and ice. Woo! Yeah, um, the one nice thing for us is that grunts are also affected by the ice, so they will slip inside their way too. Yeah, they slide um, around a lot. Makes them a little easier to avoid and sometimes makes them a little harder to hit, but um, we don't have to worry about that, right? There's no ice arena coming up or no, anything, right? Certainly not. Nope. nope, just have to run past some enemies. Cool strat for dealing with these mages where you do a bow shot, then deflect, then second bow shot. Oh, or they could dodge. Oh, that's fine. We just roll slash back up. That works out nicely. And yeah, uh, we have the uh, aforementioned ice arena coming up, which is possibly the hardest arena in the game. It's a, it's a real tricky one. Uh, I'm going to heal before going in here. Yeah. Um, this is the death knell of a lot of speed runs and a lot of especially newer runners will take a couple of levers to make it so you can run, get back here easily so yeah and unfortunately back. it's like one of the slowest deaths to take in the in the game it's like a two minute walk back yeah which really sucks yeah. the one nice thing for umbrella is that we do have this ice in the middle that can be used between waves to get bombs back um and also i don't know if you will in this case but the backpack as well could be utilized for mana yeah. so you'll be seeing him do that a couple of times in some of these waves but as you see they they also wanted this to be as challenging as possible as they throw six different enemies at you in one wave and you'll see in the next couple of waves couple hammer bros on ice and uh 
very challenging. Um, the one nice thing they did is you don't have to kill all of the enemies in every wave. Um, as you can see, he's leaving that roller as he does not actually have to kill it. Um, it's in this case, kind of gets in the way, though, but... Yeah. Got in the way, but it also okay. at least did a damage to cool. the, um... Thank you. The boomer. Uh, one strat we're gonna see here is that he can hook to this archer, um, so that he doesn't have to roll his way on the ice back. I sadly missed a, a bomb, but that shouldn't be too bad. I mean, just... oh, okay, getting a little bit hairy. This should be fine. This guy cannot climb stairs over, so we'll just oh, go down. Yes. The the hammer row was stuck on the stairs, yeah. and the the backpack was just rolling in a circle in the, into the wall. Yeah, primo uh, enemy AI at full display there. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, the one problem with bombs is that sometimes they do, don't do the splash damage that that should be done. So you'll have those cases like that where you'll think something will hit and won't. So um, Upper was able to work around it, but definitely has to be something you have to be on the lookout for. All right. Finally, our first boss, the, the third intended boss. But uh, this is Betty, the Yeti. They are hair goals. And uh, actually a very difficult boss, especially casually. I thought this was actually the hardest boss of the game, even more so than the final bosses. Yeah. Um, it does these these attacks. If you're on its side, it'll do this kind of side swipe that you just saw. And then it also does roll tra attacks that have extremely good tracking. It's probably like the best tracking attack in the game. So we're going to be trying to do roll heavies to um, avoid these attacks while getting damage and to minimize the number of rolls we'll see. We will, on the umbrella, see a few rolls, as you see here. Um, but ho hopefully we'll only see one set of that attack before we get this phase where Patty just hits the ground a bunch and gives you a bunch of time to hit her, and so you can finish her off there. Nice, Betty down. Yeah, not too bad. It looks, it looks easy, but yeah, you're actually rolling. Like, you have to roll timed to every single one of her punches uh, and, and it's not like dodge. you just buffer rolls it is very slightly off so you have to time the roll instead of instead of like just mashing it so yeah um it is a little hard to pick up that rhythm but once you've got it um it is a very easy way to take care of betty all right wait, wait. where are we we get Step through the door and go to a location we've never seen before. Uh, a cheeky little hookshot there. And we meet uh, our boss. This is the Lord of Doors. The world's best lord. I mean... It says it on that mug, so it, it must does. be true. It, like, mugs don't lie. But uh, just yeah, they're just going to congratulate us. us for our good, uh, good work ethic. And uh, we can be on our merry way. Um, I believe that this cutscene happens the first time you kill any boss yes. that is in an end section. So because we killed Betty first, we get it here. Um, but if we were to kill any of the other bosses, we'd see that there instead. The one nice thing is this cutscene drops us straight in the middle of uh, the area we want to go next. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you could also skip this cutscene if you... After killing one of the bosses, never went through a fast travel door and just, like, walked to the other bosses. Uh, but, uh, like, it's only a minute long and it, like, actually dumps us sort of where we want to go anyways, so it's just not worth. Alright, so we are back to Overgrown Ruins, heading back to the Mushroom Dungeon to go beat our second boss. Take this uh, shortcut now that we have bombs. And a, a little nice isometric trick there of hooking over that tiny section to get to that plant to skip a few extra rolls, too. Yep. And so we're now officially through Mushroom Dungeon and going to the next section. Uh, Frog King, as he has a couple of other times, has to chime in. Uh, we'll see him a couple more times before we actually fight him. All right. Here we have Flooded Fortress. I really love the, the music in this area. Actually, it hasn't started yet. It'll start in like another 15 seconds, but it's very peaceful, serene, uh, very chill in a little environment where we just run along these platforms. Uh, but the second half of Flooded Fortress is 
anything but peaceful and serene. Yeah. Well, and, and this this is the most, like, it's very calm music, but very stressful as, as a runner to go through, as these um, little bridges are as hard to roll through as you'd think. So yeah. you're constantly just, like, teetering on the edge of falling off sometimes while you're making your way through and hook shotting. And as we all know, crows are, in fact, not water birds and do not like to swim. Insert copy pasta here. Yep. Uh, we'll be making our way over. Um, if there's a time for a quick donation or a quick message, we should probably get that in for the next section. Yeah, we have a donation here from Happy by Three for fifteen dollars. I shall abbreviate their message. Burb game, burb game, burb game, burb game, burb game. Many more burb games. I think we get the message. It is a burb game. That's true. Indeed. Thank you, Happy, so much for the donation. <laughs> Thanks. But yeah, this um, is often a nerve-wracking area where you're just trying to like roll over these narrow platforms, praying that you don't accidentally fall in. Uh, here we're going to do a little gate skip. Rather than hitting the lever, you can just roll precisely right around that gate. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty straightforward with a keyboard setup, so it's, it's rather consistent. Uh, it's this NPC's about, like, name is Redshirt, as we'll quickly learn why. Thunk. Hello, Frog King. All right, I'm gonna grab this door for safety in case I die, because this, uh, this is the beginning of one of the harder sections in the game. Yeah. Um, we will be skipping the first section of this um, by baiting the boomerang into an area where we can hit it. Um, so Take that nice and slow. An I've taken like three damage from those grunts more times than I can count. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we bait over this boomerang and then hook shot over two of them, skipping a good chunk of the dungeon. Uh, but yeah, this is where it starts to get real hectic. There's going to be about a bajillion enemies, give or take, chasing us. Yeah. And as we, as we previously established, these witches will follow you to the ends of the earth, so um, if he doesn't take them out, they will follow him to the, the arena at the end of this section, so we'll take them out right now just to make it a little safer. Oh, there it is. I wasn't sure where that third mage was. They took a they took their time appearing. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Um, there's a little more to this section, but we'll be doing one more small skip here. Um, after he hooks to this button, um, there's a button here that you need to eventually run around to hit. Instead, what we'll do is we'll kind of just isometric our way, hit that button with an arrow, and just get to the end very quickly. Uh, so this arena has these three mushrooms in the corner near the near the entryway, which I'm going to make good use of. Uh, I wanted to get the, uh, the grunt too. That's okay. Uh, as, a, as a mana refresh, they, they will give me back three mana whenever I hit them, so... Yeah. Very helpful to just sort of stand here and spam bombs. Um, this section is actually just two waves. Um, they just staggered the timing of when all the enemies come in, so the main goal here is just to kind of take out these enemies before the timer ends, so you're not taking getting rid of too much time. So, you have a little bit of leniency. Um, okay, well. But it is a bunch of grunts and witches and boomers, so a lot of erratic enemies. <laughs> no, alright, well, we're going for a swim. <laughs> alright, arena down. Yeah, that, that, I find this arena actually to be quite fun with Umbrella. The like the amount of spells you get to use is actually uh, quite a bit. Yeah, it definitely looks more more comfortable than the other strats where you're hookshotting to every single enemy on a timer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just realized my apartment is getting like super duper dark because I have lights that automatically dim themselves. Well, anyways. <laughs> All right, this is our next boss. Uh, this is the Frog King, or as they are otherwise known, the King of the Swamp, Guardian of the Flooded Fortress, Lord of his domain, ruler of all he surveys, champion of the people, keeper of the five oaths, first of his name, second of his other name, he was without middle initial or mercy, destroyer of all those who would question his rightful rule or look at him askance, eater of the vanquished, devourer of the indolent, guzzler of the non-committal, um, uh, hang on, don't help me. Uh, ah, oh, dang it, what's next? Bestower of Wrathful Opprobrium and 
Uh, font of most wondrous beneficence. All glory to him and his mace. Uh, dang it. This is difficult to do at the same time as fighting. I'm sorry, I didn't memorize it. I can't <laughs> help you here. Oh, I was practicing this all day. No, the copy pasta is too long. Something, something handsome like that Einstein guy or something. I don't know. Well, I tried. Yeah. And, then, and then you eventually hit the word count. Yeah. There. I, th I think we hit the highlights. Uh, um, against so Frog King, we're just spamming a lot of fireballs. Uh, since Frog King's hitbox is so big, fireballs will actually hit him twice. So Frog King gets absolutely shredded uh, by magic. Uh, he's destroying I a lot of these tiles, uh, which is fine. We can cause them to respawn. He also will, as you see here, um, if you throw a bomb, eat it, and then have a little stun animation. So we use that as well. There we go. Frog King down. Rest in peace, Frog King. Persecuted for the simple crime of wanting to put everything in the forest under his rule. And occasionally his bottom. And that is our second boss down. So we'll be making our way back to near the beginning of the game. Uh, where we were in the manor. Um, I believe we'll be picking up an upgrade along the way. Uh, or is that no. later? No, it's later. That's yeah, later. Sorry. Not <laughs> yeah. I'm mixing up my routes. Yep, no, it's fine. I had to think about it. Uh, but yeah, we did get a, an upgrade before um, returning to Mushroom Dungeon, so we have level 4 magic now uh, as we head into uh, the basement of the manor. Uh, here we see uh, why we went out of our way to get hookshot first. Uh, you're not supposed to have hookshot in this area game. That took some time. Uh, you're it's not supposed to have hookshot in this uh, area casually, uh, but we're going to make very good use of it here, just hookshotting to basically everything. Yeah. They go to a lot of things that you wouldn't expect to be able to be hit, uh, hit or hookshot to, like the boxes. Yeah. Only some boxes, though, weirdly enough. Yeah. Cool strat there where you shoot the bow to, to trigger this thing to start moving and then hook shot over to it. All right. So uh, we're we saw um, fortunately Pothead has been captured. So part of what we're doing here is making sure that we save Pothead yeah. from uh, the nefarious plans that are going on here. Uh, here we light this uh, furnace and then trigger the cutscene so you can see the like the vault opening in the background while grandma is talking to us which saves some time we're sort of sitting through both cutscenes at once uh, and we I've, we've talked a little bit about the really good music in this game but uh, this area has an absolute uh, banger and uh, you may notice that all of these pistons that are gonna start moving momentarily uh, move in time with the music which is a really nice touch yeah. A little small trick that you did there also is um, you can bomb under this bull cart so that you can move it into a position where you can hook shot it uh, with a precise mouse angle. If, if it is not wanted to cooperate. Yeah, it is. It, it has to be like slightly to the left of the left bull cart spot, um, or it'll hook to the right side, and then unfortunately you just fall like that. Um, it is not an easy trick, but I was able to get it done. Uh, that's another quick trick where. We light the fire from that corner, um, so we don't have to roll all the way over there. And here and we're so, going to use this bazooka again to trick him into beating up some enemies for us. I'm hoping he's going to get this guy too. Looks good. Ah, uh, couldn't quite make it onto the platform though, but that's alright. So we have a bunch of fires that we need the light to start up the different pistons in these sections so we can move through them. So we'll be doing that as quickly as possible, uh, avoiding, uh, I'm not exaggerating, a couple dozen enemies <laughs> that are going to try to stop us as, as much as they can. Yep. Uh, there's a relatively new skip here discovered. Uh, I'm not going to go for it. It's incredibly inconsistent, but you can sort of hook shot over a, over a wall here. Uh, but I'm just going to do it the, the intended way, which is, like, not precise, even that much slower. Precise angle and a precise, um, like, 
uh, position, so it's, it is incredibly hard to actually get. Okay. <laughs> I got sniped to a wild hook shotting, that's alright. Just wait for the cycle here. So we can be on our yeah. way. A lot of doing the section fast is kind of trying to beat the different cycles. Um, there are even ways that you can use the music to manipulate the cycles, although there isn't much of a need to do it, it, it with optimal strats. Um, it, 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 does, it You can use it for safeties if you want. A lot of it's just kind of optimizing movement and timing your rolls and um, spells properly. Like here, where we have these pistons that are coming up to block our shots, nice. but uh, with some really precise timed angles, angled shots, Ever was able to get them all with one, yeah, one fire the, each. The, the furnace hitboxes make zero sense. They are <laughs> super easy to miss somehow uh, for whatever reason. I'm going to try to make some fast cycles here. Okay, made that. Nice. That fast cycle is probably the, the hardest in the section because you have to very, very uh, precisely roll with the time to make sure you get on that in time. And I'm going to take a quick heal before Grandma. Might as well. We have the extra seeds. And it's slightly faster than doing a save quit at the store. So might as well. Uh, but this is Grandma, uh, who has some very funny, perhaps not completely stream-appropriate dialogue that we'll just smash through. <laughs> this is fine. Uh, and we go into the Grandma fight, where we're just going to be trying to spam bow as hard as we can uh, and get in melee attacks where we can. The hookshot's also really helpful here. You can um, hook, like, a, very, a lot of times, even when she's doing the animation of going in or out of the arena, um, and you can hit her during those, too. So a lot of it's just kind of optimizing all of the movement and avoiding these hits or using them as the flex when you can. Um, what we're trying to avoid is this next cycle coming up here. Um, or at least minimize how long we're in it, where she hops around, um, and then after that she will go into this platform where she'll light a bunch of, or do a bunch of projectiles that we kind of need to avoid slash deflect in. That's fine. And uh, the fight it kind of just repeats from here. Where it's the same same patterns as we had just seen. There we go. That was a, that's a fight. A little bit slower than I than it usually is for some reason. I'm not sure where I missed a, a bunch of damage, but anyways, grandma down, and that is our our third and final giant soul. So we have finally completed the mission that the uh, the gray crow set out for us like an hour and ten minutes ago. And uh, you know he spent centuries waiting. We we did it in about an hour ten minutes. You know. It's just very, very competent crow. Yeah. With an umbrella. They whacking away. The gray crow is not a speedrunner. That's what we've learned. Uh, but yeah, now we're going to go and fight uh, the penultimate boss, which is the gray crow themselves. Uh, I love this boss fight. Uh, it's super fun. Uh, I love it with sword. I also love it with umbrella. The two fights couldn't be more different either. Uh, it's just super, super good. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is... Uh, anytime you hit Grey Crow with any attack, one of their feathers will fall off and turn into an enemy and start homing towards you. Um, and you can deflect them. You can hit them back at Grey Crow. Um, with uh, Umbrella, what we're going to do is, ideally, we just kind of stand in one place, fire four bow shots. That's going to cause four feathers to spawn. They're going to come towards us, and we're going to hit them for mana, and then repeat. Um... However, every time we hit uh, two feathers with a single sword slash, we only get one mana for that. So that, like, permanently reduces the number of feathers. Uh, and similarly, every time we miss a bow shot, uh, that reduces the number of feathers too. We can increase the number of feathers by deflecting the feathers at him, which will cause more feathers to spawn, or by getting melee attacks. Uh, and the idea is to just keep as many feathers on screen as possible, so that we can just uh, maximize our DPS will always have ammo flying towards us. Yeah, um, a little a little kinder than the other categories where you have to hit him bunch with the sword and Grey Crow 
likes to just run into you while you're doing that. So yeah. definitely a much safer strategy than, than some other run, um, categories. And here we see uh, the coolest NPC in the game. Hi, Death. Everybody awkwardly wave. You can't see me, but I'm waving. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so this is Death. Uh, uh, I'm mashing through these uh, this text, obviously, very, very quickly, but I'll try and uh, explain the lore. So basically, Death was a really big fan of shadow theater. He loved doing shadow puppets on people's walls. Then one day, the Lord of Doors came by and was like, what if I gave you the brightest flashlight in the entire world, and you could do your shadow theater everywhere? And Death was like, heck yes, deal, shakes his hand. Everything is dandy. Lord of Doors is happy. But then Lord of Doors' son comes along and is like, no, I'm going to turn off the flashlights. And there was no more Shadow Theater ever again. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's that's basically what's going on no. there. And it's then Grey Crow here is like, but I love Shadow Theater. There's no more. This is the worst. And he goes insane. That's that's basically it. I don't remember how it goes. So that, that sounds right. It sounds accurate. It does explain why Great Crows is set out right now. Uh, so as as I've already explained before, I'm trying to use these deflects and bow shots as much as possible. Um, the crow has two attack patterns: the one that just runs at you, and then also this chain attack. Um, there will be one third one later on in the fight um, that we hopefully won't see, but we might, um, where he will spit a. Um, gravity well or that he has to kind of run away from or hit. Um, we're kind of at the will of Grey Crow here. Um, he has a deterministic pattern, but a lot of it involves those chain attacks. He does it every, like, couple attacks, so it's a lot of just waiting for a moment to strike, so to speak. Yeah, I'm also manipulating him to run around a lot more by standing in front of him when he after he hook shots uh he'll he'll always go into a running phase instead of i need to like hook shot him or something he's I, there are no feathers on screen okay there are a few more and i'm nearly dead it's fine i'm sure uh this attack is the worst these tiny baby crows can uh like eat your arrows so it's a bit problematic and and they also are hook shotable which means that uh if you hook shot when they're on, they'll just hookshot them instead of whatever you're actually trying to hit. Yeah. Well, took a death there. So it goes. Tricky boss. We'll try again. See, I'm not really trying to deflect the, the feathers at him. Uh, in any percent, you are absolutely are. I'm more just trying to hit them for ammo for the most part. not get run over oh my goodness what am i doing yeah um the one other nice thing um is when gray crow does that leap attack um he chooses part way through so you can just kind of move around it um so then you're not having to worry about it fully tracking you it is much kinder than betty who will track you to the ends of the earth and back with a roll <laughs> Oh, I rolled so, right into that. Oh, this is fine, I'm sure. The one other nice thing about the um, small crow's attack is that he can't hit those for mana, even though they do, like, kind of block his attacks. So it's, it's a little bit of a trade-off there. Uh, I don't think they do give mana, do they? I, I believe they do. They might. I, <laughs> I could be wrong. I have no idea. Okay, Greg Crow's nearly dead. There we go. Just had to ask nicely, I guess. And from there, we t we immediately save quit out uh, rather than watching the the really long fade to white. After you beat Grey Crow, you can just save quit out and immediately go to this cutscene. Grey Crow is also definitely the hardest boss in the game, by far. Yeah, very true. All right, but there is one boss left. We now need to go defeat the Lord of Doors who imprisoned death uh, long ago. Or, I mean, turned off the flashlight or whatever, I think is the lore we're going with, right? Yeah, that sounds right. 
Um, one small trick that Upper will do here is he will roll and talk to Darwin, the Vault Keeper, while this animation is going on and get the spell upgrade so as not to do it afterward. Yep. Um, and I don't even think we mentioned it, but there is a small tech um, where if you kind of do a heavy into a door, um, you can uh, skip the door anima opening animation and just go to the next section. Um, Upper didn't do it there, but you would have seen it a couple times across the run where yep. you utilize that for a second or so time save. Yeah, it saves like a second or a second and a half on every single door, so we try to do it where we can. I don't do it on that very last door because you can get stuck behind it and soft locked. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention is it is the most risky one to do it on, so we may not see Upper do it there. But um, another nice small tech to look out for if you watch future runs. Great start to the gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, taking um, some damage, it's fine. Uh, so as, as you said, it was the gauntlet section. So what we'll be seeing is him go through um, uh, alternating platform sections and then small boss sections, um, kind of mimicking the attacks that we've seen before. Um, so we'll see each of the soul, giant soul bosses um, as portions of it. But before that, we have to get through these difficult platforming sections where we have to dodge bulls that are running at us and uh, hook shot towards these things. It's a little bit of a mess, but Upper luckily knows where these are going to be because it's scripted, so you can kind of just plan his movements accordingly. I personally think those enemies are adorable, but that's just me. Right, so this is the one for the witch. As you can see, we're kind of in the estate section. Each of these little sections are themed after the part of the fight that they're supposed to represent, and you'll see an ability that is related to that boss fight, like with the pots we saw there. I'm not thrilled about being at 2 HP right now. This gauntlet is incredibly long, and dying at the very end means you have to yeah. restart the whole thing, but... Uh, there, there are no checkpoints. Part of the gauntlet is you have to make it through to the very, very end. Yep. It's not that hard of a section, but... You know. <laughs> These things can happen. So here we will probably see uh, he's doing the leap attack from uh, Frog King here. Oh, missed the fast door. So if yeah. you get to this where this door spawns, like before it actually spawns, you can skip that whole animation of the door actually appearing, and you just get teleported immediately. Uh, quite a lot easier with sword. With um, umbrella, it's a lot trickier to tell if you've dealt enough damage. Yeah, it is. It is one of the biggest time saves in this section as the door animations are very long. Uh, and so, we now have the last section of this where uh, we have Betty, and as you would expect here, we will see a couple of rolls from Lord of Doors. So this will be the last of these mini sections. Um, so we have one more little platforming section we have to do, and then we'll be at the final boss. Shoutouts to TFD who showed me this very minor time save, like literally five seconds before yeah. the run started. Uh, apparently, you only shot through that pillar. Yep, pillars are fake too. That is what we've established. All right, we are through the gauntlet, and we just have one final boss between us and Victory, uh, the last lord. Nasal Gage is going to be doing the, the same old, same old, spamming as many arrows as I possibly can and getting umbrella hits when I can't. Yeah. Um, this fight is incredibly scripted, as in, for the first time you fight Lord of Doors, they'll do their attacks in the same order. Um, they're all, fortunately, the attacks that we've already seen throughout the gauntlet and throughout the other sections of the game. Uh, there are a couple that we haven't seen yet um, that I'll call out when we get to them, but uh, mostly this is just the final test of everything you've done, see if you can defeat Blast Lord in. Uh, something about flashlights. Yep. And time will be on the final hit once the, yeah. like the cutscene begins after this fight. Um, unfortunately, with these hits, um, it isn't doesn't make sense to use fire or bombs. So we'll be using arrows and light attacks. It's going to be an alternate of like as many bow shots as possible and light attacks in. Um, but we're cycling through a set of set of abilities um, where we have the frog king jump. Um, he'll do some back. Hand attacks here, uh, which you have to bait, or he'll do his next attacks. Um, 
in a shout out to the Guardian area, we have a laser attack. And now we can kind of just bait in this corner and roll heavy to keep him here, which is a nice little extra time save. So now he'll, he kind of will just do random attacks at this point, um, including this clap attack where you can roll through with your eye frames. We'll see upper just kind of reacting to what's left here. Alright, that's time. GG. Ooh. Yeah, not a bad run. Apart from the, the just the great crow, that was uh, pretty solid, deathless otherwise. Uh, a very nice run. Uh, I guess I will give some shout outs. Uh, thank you so much uh, for IndieSong for having me. Uh, this is a fun fun game. I'm glad I got to show it off. If you're looking for more speedruns of this, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash upper casserole. Uh, and then shouts to the entire Death Store speedrunning community. Uh, it's a small group, but it's uh, super friendly, super welcoming to new runners, uh, super helpful, uh, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, TFT, do you have anything to, to say? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm kind of a bit of a hiatus, but I do stream at it's underscore TFT. Um, so what, and instead I'll do is I'll shout out the community races that we hold on the Death Store Discord um, in our community channel. Um, where next weekend we'll be doing the return of community races uh, with, and this is the announcement of it actually, um, me and Crow doing a, um, a race we've never done before of a category. So that should be a ton of fun. Um, hope to see people there. But other than that, thank you to um, IndieThon for having us. I really appreciate it. It's been a ton of fun. GG, thank you for showing off this fantastic game. This was an amazing run. Um, chat, do not panic. We're going to be back in just a minute with another run. We're also going to take a moment to do some uh, behind-the-scenes tech work, but do not panic. We'll be back very shortly with more fantastic indie games.